Your next reading is Introduction to Financial Statement Analysis and these are the entire contents of your LOSs and every LOS would be covered briefly and then we will move straight to the questions. So first LOS says describe the role of financial reporting and financial statement analysis. You need to know the difference between these two. When we say financial reporting, financial reporting means how companies show their financial performance. To whom? To many users of financial statements. Who are the users of financial statements? Users of financial statements are those who have bought the shares in the company, those who have provided credit to the company, those who have other financial transactions with the firm. So financial reporting means how a company shows its financial performance to those who are interested users of financial statements, regulators, internal users, external users, those with the direct interest in the firm, those with the indirect interest like you people, you people have indirect interest in the firm of, in the, in the operation of the business. Analysts are indirect, those who have indirect interest. Regulators, they have indirect interest. So financial reporting is all about the preparation of financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, statement of changes in equity, cash flow statement, each of these statements is covered in separate reading. We will drill down in deeper details. We'll do it in much more detail. So this area will inshallah be covered in more uh, uh, finer way hopefully. So that's your financial reporting. Then what about financial statement analysis? Financial statement analysis starts once your financial statements have been completed. This is something done after financial reporting as well. RO, financial statements have been prepared, published and distributed to the shareholders and the interested parties. Financial statement analysis uses financial statement as a base, other information, relevant information from the economy and uses that information to extract, to process an information and form that will be used to make economic decisions. Financial statement analysis starts after the financial statements have been prepared. Ratio analysis, etc, etc. We'll discuss all these in the coming lectures. So once financial statements are prepared, then the financial analyst, you people will work your magic. You will extract relevant information from the financial statements. You will extract relevant information from the economic environment in the industry in which the firm is operating and then based upon this information you will help users make economic decisions. Who are the users? Those who have either invested in the firm or those who are potential investors who are willing to invest in the firm and depending upon your, your recommendation they will take a decision. Those who want to provide credit to the firm they want to see through financial statement analysis that should they extend credit, trade credit to the firm, your financial statement analysis would be the basis for the banks to grant credit to the company. Right? Your financial statement analysis will help users to form opinion about the company's ability to earn profits, generate cash flows in the future. So financial statement analysis starts once the financial statements have been prepared. Moving on to your next reading, describe the role of statement of financial position, statement of comprehensive income, statement of changes in equity and statement of cash flows in evaluating a company's performance and financial position. Doing it bit by bit, first statement of financial position, also called balance sheet. It is a statement on a particular point in time that shows companies' assets, liabilities, and equity. It's simply a statement showing assets, liability, and equity. We know assets are the resources controlled by the firm, not necessarily owned. Assets are the resources controlled by the firm, and we know they are segregated into long-lived assets. This is the terminology used in the US GAAP, long-lived assets rest of the world we use non-current assets. So assets are segregated into long-lived assets and your current assets. We'll discuss all these. Everything is coming in separate readings, so don't worry. Then 
Liabilities are then split into current and non-current liabilities. Equity also exists in different forms and that we will discuss in a separate reading, Statement of Changes in Equity. So balance sheet shows the assets, the composition of different assets, liabilities, that is the financial obligations, how much we owe to the lenders and other creditors and equity, equity is sometimes called the residual interest. What does it mean? Residual interest. Let's say a firm has $100,000 of total assets and it has total external liabilities of $70,000. So using this accounting equation, assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. If you deduct this external liability from $100,000 assets, what you get is called equity. Equity is the residual interest means what remains after settling all the liabilities. When all the external third parties liabilities are settled, if they are settled, what remains in the firm belongs to the shareholders. This is called residual interest. And this equation I'm sure you would have studied in your elementary accounting. It's called accounting equation. Assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. And one important aspect to it, you must also remember, assets is equal to liabilities plus equity. This side of your equation showing different types of assets is called the resource structure. Mind the word resource structure, different types of assets, current, non-current and their composition is called the resource structure. Where this resource has come from, these resources have been funded by this side. This side is called the capital structure or the financing structure we can say. Financing or the capital structure. So these resources have been funded either through liability or equity or combined. Right? So we will discuss balance sheet in detail. This is a simple balance sheet showing your assets total and it's equal to your liabilities and equity. Current year and prior year. So this is this will always be in a state of equilibrium. Your total assets will always be equal to the total liabilities and the stakeholder or stockholders equity. This equation will always be in a form of equilibrium. Whatever the transaction we do, these three accounts will adjust in a way that there will always be an equilibrium on both sides. That's why it's called a balance sheet. Moving on to the next part, statement of comprehensive income. Statement of comprehensive income has two parts. The first part is the normal one which you are quite familiar with. It's called income statement or profit and loss account or statement of operations. The second part is called the other comprehensive income. Collectively, this is called the statement of comprehensive income. Income statement like your normal profit and loss account which you prepare. And the second part is OCI called the other comprehensive income. It is basically a set of certain transactions that are so unique so different that they cannot be reported as a part of profit and loss account. They are reported separately as a part of other comprehensive income and together this statement is called the statement of comprehensive income. There are two allowed alternative methods of reporting other comprehensive income in the statement of comprehensive income. Either you prepare two separate statements one is the income statement, other is the other comprehensive income statement, OCI, or you can just simply show them joined in a single statement. But they must always be together. You just can't write income statement here and OCI in the notes. They must either be on the same continuous statement or one statement followed by the other. So we'll discuss, this is a separate reading and we will discuss every component of it in detail as we proceed. So statement of comprehensive income is the sum of your income statement and other comprehensive income. And this is the extract I have taken from our CMA part one, external financial reporting. These are the contents you will see in other comprehensive income. These are the transactions so distinct that they, they are not reported as a part of your income statement. Uh, we just will go briefly. Loss on defined benefit post retirement plan. Any gain and loss on this plan is reported as a part of OCI. Any gains on foreign currency translation. There's a difference between translation gain and transaction gain. This translation gain is reported as a part of OCI. If you have available for sale debt securities, any gain and loss in the remeasurement of available for sale debt securities, this gain and loss is reported as a part of OCI. And any effective portion of cash flow hedge, these the transactions are unique, can't be reported in the part of income statement and reported in a bypass separate statement called the other comprehensive income. 
combining net income driven from income statement and the net of other companies income collectively is called the statement of companies income. it's just an overview we'll discuss each and every aspect of these statements as we proceed so don't you worry next statement of changes in equity as i said equity is not a single static account it exists in different forms just like asset itself exists in form of long lived assets land building plant machinery current assets stock receivables bank short term marketable securities etc etc likewise equity exists in different forms we have a separate statement required under the us gap and ifrs it's called statement of changes in equity this statement shows all the changes in equity accounts over a period whatever period is being reported it shows basically a reconciliation between the opening balance of equity and the closing balance and what are the changes that have happened during the period it exists in many forms one of this is retained earning the profit left over for the last many years other is other comprehensive income it's the part of statement of comprehensive income its balance is reported separately as accumulated other comprehensive income we'll discuss this statement of changes in equity in much more detail with hundreds of questions i'm just gliding through the idea so that you know what it's there and what's coming in financial statements common stock is a part of equity additional paid in capital it's called share premium in india and pakistan but in the us the term they use is called additional paid in capital and treasury stock these are the shares that company have bought companies own shares which company has purchased from the market are reported as a contra account in your equity treasury stock are companies own shares purchased from the market or from someone else and they cannot be reported as an asset on the balance sheet so they are reported as a negative item on the statement of change in equity everything is coming there are two ways we can report treasury stock in the statement of change in equity so all is coming your way just wait so this is called statement of change in equity that these were the opening amounts in the equity accounts there was income earned during the period certain change in the oci because of those four items we discussed a little while earlier company might have issued some shares during the period and company might have declared some dividends so these are the changes and company might have purchased or surely it has some repurchased some more treasury stock so these were the opening balances these changes and these are the closing balances in your equity account this is called statement of changes in equity it is one of the fundamental set of one part of your set of financial statements statement of change in equity next statement of cash flows statement of cash flows it reports cash receipts and cash payments divided into three categories cash flows from operations cash flow from investing activities and cash flow from in financing activities lots and lots of questions are coming just hold on complex twisted where you have to do so much computation to find missing numbers everything is coming we're just going through an overview so statement of cash flows is shown in its the cash flows are reported in three segments operating cash flows all the cash flows resulting from the normal business operations the numbers that you will see here will primarily be driven from income statement some of it from the balance sheet investing activities inflows outflows related to property plan and equipment acquisition or sale of property any investment made in security investment in other firms any investment in subsidiaries or segments all the investing activities cash flows related to it are reported here in the investing section and the financing activities the last section of your cash flow statement it shows all the inflows and outflows related to financing activities when we say financing activities it means the money received or paid against the issue of shares against the issue of bonds or against the redemption of bonds or redemption of preferred stock payment of dividends remember dividend payments under the us gap required to be reported as a part of financing activity those of you who have been following ifrs or those who have been reporting preparing financial statement using other ways please remember under the us gap dividend payments are reported as a part of financing activities when we'll do cash flow statement in a specific reading we will definitely do all these so this is your statement of cash flows split into three sections operating cash inflows outflows net here fin investing cash inflow nets here and financing activities cash net flows here so this total gives you the net increase and decrease in the cash over the period let's say if you had the opening balance of $10000 in all your cash and cash equivalents 
So the net cash generated through all these three activities should give you a closing balance of 29,500. 10,000 was the opening balance. Net cash generated by these three activities was 19,500. So the closing balance 10 plus 19,500. 29,500 should be the closing balance of your cash and cash equivalents available with you. This is the check that your cash flow statement is okay because mostly professional accountants who work in accounting firms or in businesses, they know once they have input all these inflows, added the opening cash balance, your closing balance should tally with the available balance of cash and cash equivalent. That's a check that your cash flow statement apparently is correct. So we'll discuss in detail as we proceed. Moving on, notes to financial statements. Financial statements, published financial statements, I'm sure you would have seen. Let's say in the long-lived assets, there is a single item showing investment in property, plan and equipment. And the amount being reported is $100 million. Now, this is a single amount. I want to see the breakup. I want to see what actually constitutes property, plan and equipment. I want to see the composition. I want to see the accumulated depreciation charge so far, the net book value of the component assets in property, plan and equipment. For this, notes are prepared, which is an integral, integral part of financial statement. Notes to accounts are an integral part of financial statement. Without notes, your financial statements are not complete. Notes are audited just like your balance sheet, your income statement and statement of change in equity. So notes to financial statements will give me the breakup of property, plan and equipment. It will give me the basis of preparation of financial statements. It will give me the information regarding which accounting methods has been used for revenue recognition. Estimates used by the management. Assumptions. If there is any pending litigation, maybe one of my employees got injured, he filed a case against my company in the court of law. This decision might take place in a couple of years. So this pending litigation, this might result in some future penalty that the company might have to pay. It has to be reported since it cannot be reported within the body of balance sheet or income statement because no amount or no uh, uh, objective information is available with regard to dollar amount. So it needs to be disclosed in footnotes. Contingencies, any legal action, its ramifications, any prospective business acquisition, details of your, what you can say, the breakup of your individual amounts given in the notes. So all the details relating to the amounts shown on the balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, statement of change in equity, they are given notes, they are given in the notes to accounts. Notes to accounts, notes to financial statement are an integral part of your financial statement. Without them, your financial statements are incomplete. Notes to financial statement, they amplify what is given in the financial statement. They explain what is given in the financial statement. One important point you must note, you cannot use notes to financial statement to justify an incorrect presentation. You have made an incorrect presentation on the face of balance sheet or income statement. You cannot justify it through notes. Or if there is a mistake in the balance sheet or in the income statement, you cannot justify the mistake or rectify the mistake through notes. Notes just need to amplify, explain the contents of the balance sheet or income statement or statement of change in equity. Not to rectify the mistakes or not to rectify the misrepresentation of the numbers on the face of the financial statements, right? That's our notes for. Then management commentary or MDA management discussion and analysis. It is also called management report, operating or financial review, many terms used for it. So management commentary is a part of financial statement and it is not audited, remember. Management commentary, notes are audited. Financial statements, balance sheet, income statement, cash flow statement, change in equity, they are all audited, but management commentary is beyond the preview of the auditor's scope. So what does do we what do we have in management commentary? Management commentary addresses the nature of business. What are the management's objective? Comment upon the past performance. 
any key information that management believes needs to be discussed in, in the report, any significant risk that the business is facing and management believes it needs to be brought to the attention of the shareholders and the related uh, stakeholders, how the effects of inflation increasing prices affects our business, any impact of uh, off balance sheet financing like any purchase commitment or if the management is planning for any major expenditure, capital expenditure, major acquisition or major disinvestment in the future. So this is reported as a part of your management commentary MDA. And remember, it is required in the US GAAP. It is required under the US GAAP, but it is recommended under the IFRS. Under the IFRS, MDA is not required, is not as such mandated. Under the GAAP, it is required. Under the IFRS, it is recommended. So these differences are given across your FRA. I hope you will go through it. Next, we have uh, the fourth LOS. Describe the objectives of audit of financial statement, the types of audit reports, and the importance of effective internal controls. Every aspect of LOS you should have clear concept of, and that's the foundation of your whole preparation, and then you you will be able to do the questions more effectively. So the first is what is, before we discuss audit, we need to know the basic structure of an organization. Listed companies, those whose securities are traded on stock exchanges, there is a, what you call a divorce between control and ownership. That's the basic reason we need, need an audit. Why? Because let's say we're talking about Apple Incorporated and millions of people have invested in Apple Incorporated, but they are not controlling it. They are not managing it. Ownership is outside the business and some other people appointed by these owners, shareholders, they are the one who control. So there is a divorce between ownership and control. Owners are not directly controlling the business. People appointed by these owners are controlling the business on their behalf. So this divorce between ownership and control necessitates that someone should enforce the management to report fairly. If management is left alone to decide what is to report it, what is not to be reported, they might always paint a rosy picture. Everything is perfectly fine. Ownership might be deceived. Owners may be deceived. In order to protect the interest of the owners, the shareholders, under the law, under the corporate laws, listed companies are required to get their financial statements audited by us, chartered accountants, ACCAs in England, CPAs in the US. Qualified accountants, professional accountants in the US CPAs firms, they are the one appointed by the board of directors, specifically the audit committee. Audit committee will appoint the audit firm and this audit firm will conduct an audit to assess whether the financial statements are true, are giving true and fair view. They have been prepared in accordance with the gap. Once the audit firm, the auditors certify through an audit opinion that the financial statement are free from material errors, they give true and fair view and they are prepared in accordance with the US gap. Then my, it, what you can say, I will be more willing to accept the numbers once the financial statements are audited. Because otherwise I have no way to certify whether the numbers given by the management are they dependable or reliable. So in other words, audit lends credibility to the numbers given in the financial statements. Once the financial statements are audited, I will get comfort as a shareholder that the numbers are true and fair. They are not misstated. At least they are reasonably fair. So that is the reason in limited companies, it is required under the law, the financial statements be audited by qualified professional accountants and their certification, their audit will lend credibility to the financial statements and they will become more reliable. Right? So that is audit. Audit is an independent review of an entity's financial statements by us, chartered accountants, ACCAs, CPAs, also called public accountants. They are the one who examine the financial reports and supporting records and after they gain sub sufficient audit evidence then they give their opinion whether the financial statements are giving true view true and fair view or not this is the main objective of audit to lend credibility to the numbers given in the financial statements in order to 
to reduce or mitigate this divorce between ownership and control. Types of audit report. There are four types of audit report. Unqualified opinion, qualified opinion, adverse opinion and disclaimer. First of all, let me just give you an overall idea of the content of the audit report. Audit report basically contains three specific areas or three parts. First part asserts that it is the management's responsibility to prepare financial statement. It is always a part of audit report. That financial statement are prepared by management, management is responsible. This is the first part. The second part follows that the financial statement, whether or not they have been prepared under the US GAAP, since we are doing CFA, American certification, otherwise where IFRS is applied, the financial statements are audited under the IFRS. So whether the financial statements are prepared in compliance with GAAP, and finally, whether I am, as an auditor, am I satisfied with the financial statements? Do they give a true and fair view? Yes, they do. And then we certify, sign the financial, the audit report indicating that the financial statements have been audited and the financial statements are giving true and fair view. So my opinion can be of four types depending upon the different circumstances. Let us see each circumstance separately. First is the unqualified opinion. Unqualified, sometimes also called the cleanest opinion or unmodified opinion. This is the opinion given when the financial statements, it's called cleanest opinion when the financial statement are prepared in compliance with the US GAAP and the financial statements are giving true and fair view. This is the cleanest report ever out of these four. This is the report that I as a shareholder, as a banker, as a creditor, will rely, the, I, this cleanest report on the financial statements will give me more comfort that the numbers on the financial statements are credible. Next is the qualified opinion. Under the qualified opinion, financial statements are not in accordance with the gap. There have been certain transactions which are not accordance, in accordance with the US gap requirements. But there is no misrepresentation. Financial statements are not in accordance with the US GAAP, but it doesn't mean they, there is any misrepresentation. There is no misrepresentation. What has maybe they might have played with depreciation numbers, or they might have played with the inventory valuation, or they might have played with the employees' obligations. So they may have uh, engineered some numbers with, with which the auditor is not comfortable. He finds it uh, that the financial statement numbers have been fudged. So in this case, I will issue a qualified opinion. It is similar to unqualified opinion, but a paragraph describing the reason for qualification, why I do not agree with the certain uh, numbers on the balance sheet, on the income statement. So that you need to give a paragraph explaining your reasons of disagreement. This is called a qualified opinion. Then, adverse opinion. Adverse opinion means worst opinion. Company didn't follow GAAP, no GAAP was complied and financial statements are giving a misrepresented view. There is misrepresentation. So adverse opinion is the worst opinion. No compliance with the GAAP, financial numbers have been fudged. So such an opinion, if given, will clearly put the shareholders, different creditors or bankers at discomfort while trading with the business. So, of course, companies would not like this report on their financial statements. So, the last one is called the disclaimer of opinion. Disclaimer of opinion is given when no opinion is possible. How come no opinion is possible? Because I was not given access to records. I was not given access to physical facilities. There was a scope limitation. I was stopped from doing my work. Since I did not conduct my work, how would I form an opinion? I will refuse to give an opinion. I am unable to express an opinion. This is called disclaimer of opinion. Then the last part of LOS is related to internal controls. Internal controls is a system of check and balance in an organization that ensures that the financial statements will be prepared as per the US GAAP. Management policies will be followed 
and assets will be protected and safeguarded. There are many ways to define internal controls as per the IMA, as per the Institute of Internal Auditors, as per the Institute of uh, Certified Public Accountants. But just keep in mind, internal control is a system of check and balance so as to keep the business operating in a smooth way, ensuring that the financial statements are in accordance with the US GAAP. You can easily memorize this using this acronym. It will be quite easy for you. ERC. This is what we use in CIE and, C and CMA. ERC, everything really counts. It's a quick way to memorize what internal controls mean. So you can memorize this word, this phrase only. Everything really counts. <coughs> this is internal control. How? E stands for efficient and effective operations. Efficient and effective operations. Reliability of financial reporting. And last, C stands for compliance with the laws and regulations. So this is internal control, system of internal controls that ensures that everything really counts, that the system is efficient and effective with regard to operations. Financial reporting is reliable and compliance with the laws and regulations. This system is called a system of internal control. It is the responsibility of the management to devise the system of internal control. Auditor will report on the system of internal controls as well. Remember, please remember under AS5, this is the auditing standard 5. You don't need to know that. So specifically related to CP and CMA. AS5, under this standard, an auditor is required to conduct two engagements simultaneously. One, the financial statement audit and also the audit of internal controls. Auditors are required to report both on the financial statement truth and fairness as well as the effectiveness of system of internal controls. So it is a part of audit. Report on the effectiveness and efficiency of internal control is a part of external financial audit. An auditor will perform both these jobs in a single engagement, both reports on financial statements truth and fairness and the effectiveness and efficiency of internal control system. What is internal control system? ERC, efficient effective operations, reliability of financial reporting and compliance with the laws and regulations. So that was your LOS 4. LOS 5 says identify and describe information sources that an analyst use in financial statement analysis besides annual financial statements so, and supplementary information. So what are other sources of information available to us as analysts other than financial statements? Other than your annual financial statements, quarterly and semi-annual reports, listed companies under the law are required to submit their quarterly and semi-annual reports to the Securities and Exchange Commission. These reports are called the interim reports. Interim reports are issued periodically, quarterly and biannually before the financial, finally financial statements are submitted to the SEC. So this could be another way for us. Rather than just waiting for the uh, published financial statements, we can look for quarterly and semi-annual financial statements that have been filed with the SEC. Then, SEC filings are available at EDGAR. This is the system in the US, Electronic Data Gathering Analysis and Retrieval System. Those companies that are listed in the US, registered, they are required to file certain documents. Those, those who are from Pakistan and they are working in uh, accounting departments, I'm sure you know that uh, we are required to file certain forms, certain documents with the SEC like Form 32, Form 28, Form 27, Form A. Just a minute, let me plug in the charger, else the system will shut down. So such regulatory submissions are required in the US and in India as well. So SEC filings are available from Edgar, so I can uh, download or I can access any of the publicly available document available for a certain company like Form 8K, this is the form the firms are required to file for any major acquisition or disposal of assets or any change in corporate governance. So if the firm is uh, making such a change, it has to be reported on Form 8K and I as an analyst, I can access this form because it is publicly available do document. I can access this from <coughs> the system, Edgar. Form 10K, this is also an additional document available which I as an analyst can use to access certain information. Form 10K basically <coughs> is similar to your financial statement that have been submitted uh, to the SEC. 
then why do we have to su submit it separately? It's under the law, it's required. It's not a substitute. You know, if you submit your financial statement, including balance sheet, income statement, and all this complete set of accounts, the similar information is included in 10K. So you as a company cannot uh, disagree or you cannot uh, defy not submitting 10K form because you have submitted the financial statement. Everything that is there in 10K is already there in, in the financial statements. So since it is required in the law, submitting financial statement does not relieve you from the responsibility of filing 10K. So 10K basically is the information contained in the financial statements. It's a detailed document and submission of 10K is not a substitute of financial statement. Financial statements are required to be submitted separately and 10K form is a summary form of all the information is to be submitted under the law. So if you as an analyst need information in a summary form, so 10K can be accessed from Edgar system for a particular company. Then we have form 10Q as well. This form is submitted quarterly, but this 10K is submitted annually. That's the only difference. <coughs> and more or less they have the same information. So these are the additional information sources for me as an analyst other than your published financial statements. 8K form regarding major disinvestments, major acquisition disposals. Form 10K is a summary of your financial statements. Form 10Q is submitted quarterly and it is uh, not audited. Form and proxy statements. Now this is uh, required little discussion. Proxy statements are required by the firm when the firm needs votes of the shareholders. This proxy statement will contain information about the uh, directors or when there is election of directors to be conducted. It contains information about management's qualifications or any issues of stock options to the management or to the directors or any information related to the management that is going to be elected in the board meetings. So proxy statement is issued when vote of shareholders is required. So this proxy statement is also available on Edgar system and we can uh, get to know about some key management employees, their qualifications, their compensation, etc. if we want to know about a particular management, key management employee. Then we have corporate reports also, press releases, company's website, company's industry where it is operating, trade journals, statistical reporting services, now a very important point you must remember. Which of these information will be more reliable? That's very important. Regulatory filings, yes, very reliable. Externally verified by the Security and Exchange Commission. Then your last reading, describe the steps in the financial statement analysis framework. First step, when you want to conduct a financial statement analysis, the first step is state objectives and context. Why do we want to conduct a financial statement? analysis. What questions do we seek answers to? Why information is essential and what information is required? What are the resources available, monetary as well as time-based? This is the first step. Once settled, the next step is to gather data. Of course, these are the sources we discuss: financial statements, Edgar system, financial press, industry average, overall economic situation and everything you can get gather up. You can might visit the company sites as well. You can discuss the issues with the company's uh, lawyers uh, if allowed, customers, suppliers, etc. So you will gather data. That's the second step in financial statement analysis framework. Third, process the data. Once the data has been gathered, you may need to make some adjustments to make data comparable. Like for example, uh, one of our subsidiary is operating in Pakistan where we follow IFRS and another subsidiary of similar nature of similar asset bases operating in the US where the US gap is to be followed. Since these are two different reporting regimes, there will be some differences. So we may have to make adjustments. Either we need to convert IFRS into gap based or gap into IFRS so as to bring them on a comparable basis. Right? Or maybe if you are comparing two uh, years, 2004 and 2003, and in the last year we had an unusually last gain, large gain on disposal, which is one off, and we are trying to compare these two years' performance. So we need to exclude this extraordinary gain or some unusual items from, from the prior financial statement so as to make them more 
comparable. So we need to make some adjustments. We need to make some appropriate adjustments so as to make these numbers comparable. If the business are of dissimilar size, like we are comparing a small bank, MCB in Pakistan, with a large bank in the US, right? So in that case, you can't compare dollars with dollars. So you may have to adjust the financial statements on common size basis, common size balance sheet, common size income statement, so that you can compare these on percentage terms. This is a separate reading we'll discuss in detail. So this is how we'll process the data, we'll make adjustments, we'll work our magic of ratios, and then we'll move on. Once it's done, next step is analyze and interpret the process data. Whatever we have done, the ratio analysis of different tools we use, we'll use this data to answer the key questions which we set out at the out outset the beginning we need to answer so we need to use this data to answer the questions that we set out at our step one now based upon this analysis we'll come up with some conclusions some recommendations so decide what conclusions and recommendations we can form that supports our analysis and data once it is decided then we draft our conclusion and recommendation in compliance with the code and standard that might be relevant. Like, for example, <coughs> we have conducted a financial statement ratio analysis for the last two years to 18, 19, for example. And we want to compare it to the next year, 2020, 2021. Right? Last two years data is already historical. But the current 2020 or 2021, we have taken the data for the first quarter only, for example. As the time progresses, quarter two information would be available from Edgar system. We need to add the information as it is received. So we may have to update our analysis as the new information is received. So the last step is to follow up. Update your analysis, repeat the steps periodically so as to make any changes that might be required in the given circumstances. So this was your last LOS. Describe the steps in the financial statement analysis framework. Now we'll do questions. <coughs> 